Did you just name my pray? Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay, so as we are. It says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. So, (laughs) that's my worship for this morning. Amen. Thank you, Bree Bree. Out of breath, but we love her. All right, Mr. S, we are ready to go. All right, we're beginning today with our French, then we'll go into Spanish. And we'll cap it off with English. So let's get started right away. And tomorrow, we'll let you know the update on the scores tomorrow where the class are staying throughout this week right now. So, Mr. Valson, I'll wait. All right, I know we're excited about hearing French. So, Mr. Valson, the time is yours. Again, the rounds are 40 seconds first round, no, 30 seconds first round, 50, then 110, and 125. There was a clarification made yesterday, uh, an issue brought up. Yesterday, it was, it was brought that um, one of the freshman math questions that uh, when time expired, even though that they had it correct, time had expired. And the question was brought up that uh, the other day, when the Jews were answering a question, time expired when one of the students, were, were, it was James, who um, didn't finish. Correct. However, it was discussed be, um, after chapel that James, in answering the question, he did answer within the time. He didn't mention about the 1815 compromise in the beginning of his answer. So the, that the point was awarded for James, uh, not James, for, for the junior class, because he didn't mention it, but for the freshmen, did not complete in time, so no point is awarded. So we want to make that clarification. I do appreciate the fact that they came after to discuss it, because that's the way we run things here um, for Battle of the Classics. Thank you very much. All right, let's begin. Round one. Freshmen. A freshman, complete the sequence. Cat, wheat, doos. Says. That's good. <laughs> Sophomore, répondez en français. Quel jour tu vas à l'église? Je vais à l'église à samedi. That's good. Correct the sentence, juniors. Correct the sentence. Je mange un livre et j'étudie une pomme. Je mange une pomme et j'étudie. Je mange une pomme et j'étudie un livre. Very good. <laughs> Seniors, translate into French. The supermarket does not sell bread. Um, le market ne vend pas de pain. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> Round two. Répondez à la question. Freshmen, quels sont les sept jours de la semaine? Dimanche, lundi, mardi, mercredi, jeudi, vendredi, samedi. Very good. 
Round two, sophomore, translate into French. I always do my homework at the same time every day. I always do my homework at the same time every day. Je fais um, ma devoir tous les jours, tout le temps. Je fais toujours mon devoir à, à la même heure chaque jour. That's not correct, okay? Juniors, répondez en français. Quels sont les douze mois de l'année? Janvier, février, mars, avril, mai, juin, juillet, août, septembre, octobre, novembre, décembre. Very good. <laughs> Rewrite. Uh, seniors, rewrite this sentence in the plural. Je fais les courses avec mes copains. Les courses, S, mes copains, P A I N S. Say the whole sentence in French. Je fais les courses avec mes copains. Plural. Wrong. Nous faisons les courses avec nos copains. All right, complete the sentence. Freshman, le fils de mon oncle est mon... Cousin. Cousin. Very good. <laughs> Sophomores, complete the sequence. 60, 120, 180. Very good. Juniors, complete the sequence. 75, 150, 225. 300. 300, very good. <laughs> Seniors, 90, 180, 270. 360. Excellent. <laughs> Freshman. We write this sentence in the third person singular. Je suis de Paris et je vais à l'école à 8 heures le matin. Il est de Paris et il va à l'école à 8 heures le matin. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Rewrite this sentence in the third person plural, sophomores. Je veux acheter du pain, mais je n'ai pas d'argent. Il va acheter du pain, mais il n'a pas d'argent. That's not correct. Ils veulent acheter du pain, mais ils n'ont pas d'argent. Ils veulent. OK? All right. Ron, um, juniors, we write the italicized words with a pronoun. Il est plus intelligent que son frère. Il est plus intelligent que son frère.
Dieu. Say the whole sentence. Il est plus intelligent que lui. Que? Il est plus intelligent que lui. Il est plus intelligent que lui. Yes. It's not correct. Que lui. All right. Complete this sentence in the passé composé. Seniors, passé composé. And then when you're giving me your answer, you start with hier soir, OK? Nous regardons la télé tous les soirs. Hier soir, nous avons regardé la télé. Excellent. Thank you so much, my French-speaking people. Time for a Spanish round. So if you're in it, you stay. If not, step on out. Yo, you see, Josh was coming already. Let him go. Josh was day beyond the nine. Looking for one more sophomore. Freshmen are ready. Juniors are ready. And our seniors, they are ready to go. All right, great round. That was a great round, the first one there. We'll continue here in the Spanish round. And uh, freshmen, you ready? All right, Mr. Bowson, it's yours. Run, run, freshman. Nueve, dieciocho, veintisiete. I'm treinta y seis. Muy bien. Uh, uh, that's correct, correct. Uh, that's good. Answer in Spanish. ¿A qué hora comes el desayuno? Yo como el desayuno a las 10 de la mañana. Muy bien. Correct, correct the sentence. Yo hablar con mi amigo ayer. Yo hablé, yo hablé con mi amigo ayer. Muy bien. Translate into Spanish, seniors. Last year, my mother served meat at the party. El año pasado, mi mamá sirvió carne en la fiesta. Very good. Contesta las preguntas, freshmen. ¿Cuáles son los 12 meses del año? Enero, febrero, marzo, abril, mayo, junio, julio, agosto, septiembre, octubre, noviembre, diciembre. Muy bien. Translate into Spanish, sophomores. Nora says she wants to study Spanish in Spain. Nora dice que ella quiere estudiar español en España. Está bien. Very good. <laughs> Completa la frase. Yo dejé mi maleta en el baúl del taxi. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Good. 
Yo sé que mis amigos hablan mucho. That's good. Nosotros You have to say, nosotros sabemos que nuestros amigos hablan mucho. Complete the sentence. Los hijos de mis abuelos son mis... Padres o madres. Padres o tíos. Sí. No, no. It is padres, madres y tíos. It's three of them. So should I give it to them? They have two. Okay, all right, then no good. So it's three. Yeah, okay. All right, complete the sequence. Sesenta y cinco, cien treinta, cien noventa y cinco. Very good. <laughs> Juniors, seten, setenta y cinco, cien cincuenta, doscientos veinticinco. Doscientos. Very good. All right. Seniors, cien cinco, doscientos diez. Cuatrocientos veinte. Cuatrocientos veinte. Freshman, rewrite the sentence in the third person, singular. Vamos a la escuela a las ocho de la mañana. Steve. Él va a la escuela a las ocho de la mañana. Sophomores, we write this sentence in the first person plural. Yo tengo que hacer mi tarea cada mañana. First person plural. Nosotros tenemos que. All right. All right. Juniors, 
Replace the italicized words with a pronoun. Pronoun, okay? Él no es más inteligente que Wang y yo. Él no es más inteligente que nosotros. Very good. All right. Complete the sentence in the simple past. El pretérito, simple past. Okay? No digo eso. When you start your answer, start with ayer. No digo eso. Start with ayer. I have it there for you. Ayer no dije eso. Very good. Very good. Excellent. Spanish is now over. We go to English. Good job. Good job. Great work, everyone. Great work. Brianna. Brianna Baptiste. Brianna Baptiste. Brianna Baptiste, you are needed in the front. Thank you. Freshmen look ready. Sophomores look ready. Juniors about to get ready. And seniors are about to get ready. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to get started. Freshmen, you ready? We'd like to get started, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on, Miss Henry. All right, thank you. Miss Henry, the time is yours. All right, first question for the freshmen. Identify the part of speech for each underlined word. The baby crawled under the bed. Okay, baby, noun, crawled, verb, under, preposition, and bed, noun. That is correct. <laughs> All right, num uh, question for the sophomores. What figurative device or figurative language is being used in the following sentence? 
and we dashed for the bushes just as Mrs. Lottie's cane went whizzing at my head. Onomatopoeia. That is correct. All right, so just to explain, for a junior and senior English, it will be divided between like junior English and then AP English for juniors and then senior English and then AP English for seniors. So the first round goes for junior English. Rewrite the following sentence to correct the misplaced modifier. We had a pizza after the movie that was delicious. After the movie, we had a pizza that was delicious. That is correct. <laughs> All right. Seniors, this is senior English. What is a framed story? Identify one framed story we read in class and explain why it is considered a framed story. Okay, a framed story is a story within a story. And one story that we did is the Canterbury Tales when they were on a journey. And within that story, they had travelers with them and they had to tell the story. And whoever wins get a free prize. That is good. All right, freshmen. What is the function of a conjunction? What is the acronym we use to remember coordinating conjunctions, and what does each letter stand for? Um, the function of a conjunction is to combine two sentences. Um, the acronym we use was fanboys. F stands for <laughs> I'm going to stop you there because that is incorrect. The function of a sentence is to connect two parts of a sentence or two clauses together. So that was incorrect. Yes. All right. Sophomores, identify the direct and indirect object in the following sentence and explain why you came to your answer. Bob handed his father the trophy. The trophy is the direct object. Father is the indirect object. Trophy is receiving the action. Handed is the verb. And father is who's getting the trophy, which is for, for who. That is correct. Wow. All right, AP English, juniors. You're going to identify the literary technique used below. There are three options. A, he's not a liar, he's creative with the truth. Ah. B, I came, I saw, I conquered. C, love is like the sea. It's a moving thing, but still in all, it takes a shape from the shore it meets, and it's different with every shore. Okay, so um, three is colloquialism, uh, two is uh, ascendantin, and one is... Oh, one is euphemism. That is correct. <laughs> okay, senior AP, identify each literary technique used below. If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. B, neither snow nor rain nor heat nor gloom of night stays these couriers. And C, a caveman microwaves his dinner. Three is anachronism, one is antithesis, and two is polysendentin. That is correct. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, freshmen, I'm going to read you this short ex excerpt from a story, and then you're going to answer the questions that follow. When Vince got to the party, he was a little bit worried that he couldn't find his friends. Vince wasn't really an awkward person, but he found it a bit awkward to stand around at a party with a bunch of people he hardly knew. Then he bumped into one of the football players, Greg. Greg was a big guy with red hair, and he always gave Vince problems. Hey, Vince, want a beer? Vince looked down at his soda. No thanks, Greg. I've got to drive. Greg walked closer to Vince and puffed out his chest. Come on, Prince Vince. You're going to turn me down? Vince didn't have anything against drinking, even though he wasn't of the legal age. But his cousin had died in an alcohol-related accident, and he wouldn't make the same mistake. I'm going to have to. Not tonight, Greg. Vince said as he walked past Greg, noticing that some of his friends had arrived. Greg crushed a beer can in his hand and grunted. So I want you to tell me who the protagonist is, the antagonist. Is Greg a dynamic or a static character and why? And then is Vince a round or flat character and why? The protagonist is Greg. The antagonist is. The protagonist is Vince. The antagonist is Greg. That is incorrect. <laughs> Sophomores. Uh, so you're going to receive a paper. I want you to write a haiku about spring. Spring is beautiful. I love to enjoy the warmth. It gives my heart joy. That is correct. <laughs> All right, junior English, and please allot one minute and 50 seconds for this question. American literature is divided into periods called literary movements. List the literary movements we've studied thus far in order, ending in the current period we're studying. Choose one work from any of the literary periods. State the author's name of the work, the title of the, the author's name, the title of the work, and explain how that work is characteristic of that period. Periods are Native American, Puritanism, Puritism, Enlightenment, Romanticism, Dark Romanticism, Transcendentalism, Imagism, Realism, and Modernism. Modernism, we're choosing Modernism, The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And the reason why it's Modernism is because um, 
it takes the story takes place during the Roaring Twenties, and it represents it talks about the time change after World War One. The answer is incorrect. In your listing, you put transcendentalism, imagism, realism. Transcendentalism, realism, imagism. We can we can talk after. All right, this is All right, uh, senior English, you have a minute and 30 seconds to answer this question. Answer the following questions. One, who popularized, not who invented, who popularized the sonnet form? How many lines are in a sonnet? And number three, you are going to identify the rhyme scheme of a Shakespearean sonnet, a Petrarchan sonnet, all three possibilities, Spencerian sonnet, and a Miltonic sonnet. So Shakespeare popularized the sonnet form. There are there are 14 lines in a sonnet. Shakespearean is A B A B C D C D E F E F G G. Patriarch is A B B A A B B A C D E C D E. Yeah, C D E C D E. A B A I'm oh, sorry, A B B A A B B A C D C D C D A B B A A B B A C D C D E E Spencerian is A B A B B C B C C C D C D E E and Miltonic A B B A A B B A C D E C D E. So you have the rhyme schemes correct, but Petrarch popularized the sonnet form, not Shakespeare. Petrarch came first. So the answer is incorrect. All right, freshmen, explain, so a video is going to be shown. You're going to explain what rhetorical devices is being used in the commercial and how.
right, so what rhetorical devices are being used in the commercial and how? Ethos because um, Usain Bolt is a um, professional athlete. So, okay, and Michael Jordan um, is used as credibility. Because people are more inclined because famous people are used in advertisement. Okay, so the ethos was correct, but pathos is also used in this as well. All right, all right moving on to the sophomores. Come up with two different scenarios. Each scenario should have one example of irony used from the three that we discussed in class. In your answer, include the type of irony and explain how it is ironic in the scenario. Okay, so the first one um, is situational irony. Is it, and it is a fire department um, burning down because you wouldn't expect a fire department burning down because that's like not pleasant. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Verbal irony. Someone gets a flat tire and they had a bad day and then they say, what a great day to be alive. This is obviously, you know, verbal irony because after your tire is flat, you're not going to be happy. You're going to be pretty sad. That is correct. <laughs> Juniors, AP English, please allot two minutes for this question. Using the techniques for writing a thesis statement as we've studied in class, Write a thesis statement explaining how the author uses literary elements and techniques to discuss the effect of love in this poem. And note that this poem doesn't have an author or a title, but it's a haiku. If you wanted to use that in your work. In the haiku, the speaker uses contrast, extended metaphor. You can keep going. From those two, you can keep going. And personification to convey. To convey that the beauty of love is comparative to um, the Earth's natural beauty, ultimately conveying that in nature, um, the intricacy of its processes can remind us of the ones that we love. That is correct. Very good. Good job, guys. Good job. All right, seniors, AP, use two minutes, two minutes. All right, using the literary techniques we've studied in class, write a thesis statement on how Kristen Warfield uses literary techniques and elements to discuss the complex nature of love and relationships in her poem, A Thorny Rose.
one minute remaining. Talk to me. Talk it out. Talk to me. In Kristen Warfield's poem, she uses simile, juxtaposition, and imagery to express the author's differing views on love, ultimately illuminating the idea that relationships are not always easy, but still bring happiness. That is correct. Very good. <laughs> Very good, everybody. Excellent work. Uh, we finished in pretty good time today, which is, which is excellent. Uh, before we close up, a reminder, if anyone's still interested in running for a student association, let me know. I can give you a, a copy, or I can send it to you uh, via email. Just let me know who you are. We received five applications yesterday, so that is awesome. Let's keep them coming. Uh, also, if you, again, uh, the 5K is not this weekend. It's the next weekend after that 5K. Mo a lot of people have, so have signed up for. Um, just to keep in mind, if you are running that event, make sure you've actually been doing some kind of training before then. Don't expect to run that 5K and because you're young and you can run it. Uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. So make sure, hopefully you've been doing all this time and working on it. And next week, I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let the runners and walkers know what time they must complete that 5K. Thank you. Uh, just before we go today, uh, last week sometime I spoke to you guys very passionately about greater's greatness and how we can fulfill, we can always be great. And today we have in our midst two of the guys I spoke about. Oh, yes. um, Noe, I want you to come first. Yeah. Let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. All right, Miss Elliot. Noe was a member of our final, our last class, class of two, 2019. This young man just finished Andrews University, summa cum laude, and is going to Brown University on full scholarship for applied mathematics. Let's give him a hand. You're in the presence of greatness. And I want, so you see it in the flesh. What, what do I normally say? Empirical. All right. And then his younger brother, Moses, Moses come. Uh, these, just to let you know, I, I have to tell you, they went, both went to Bronx, Manhattan. Bronx, Manhattan. Are you with me? All right. So, here's Moses. Last year, both of them went on uh, projects during the summer. And because we're in the season, I want to let you know that when Moses was here, at one point, we were in, at Battle of the Classes. He was his own team. Uh, so, he competed against pretty much the whole school. <laughs> it was, was amazing. Gentlemen, we are very proud of both of you. We are very proud of both of you. And the fact that they can come and see you in the flesh and recognize that we are always greater together. We love you. We love you. By the way, guys, Mr. McDowell, just before they go today, I need for you guys to interview them and put it on our video. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, after chat. Boss. We can't can believe. Thank you, gentlemen. We love you. We love you. Yeah, man. Every time. Uh, by the way, uh, no, he owes me because he left greater to be a chemist. And he changed his chemistry from chemistry to mathematics. <laughs> Mercy. Mercy. I hear you. All right. So today, at this time, just before we go for lunch, I am going to ask Mr. Javon Charles and Miss Kamora. I want you guys to go downstairs and get the first meal in the teacher's lounge down there. Uh, yes. Uh, one moment, Miss Ball, we'll come in. Oh, you have an announcement? Yes. Yes. 
Excuse me? 